If you grew up in the UK like myself, you'd be hard pressed to recall any children's birthday party that didn't come with a traditional party platter of pineapple and cheese on a toothpick. Would you care for a canopy, Mr. Alston? I should indeed. I should care for cheddar cheese and pineapple on a stick. But it wasn't always like this for the pineapple. Now a status symbol adorned by those who visited the Queensland Central Coast or a homeware store recently, only a few hundred years ago, the pineapple was a status symbol which was reserved only for the wealthy elite. It all started back in 1493, during Columbus's second voyage to the New World. I will discover a shortcut to India and bring back some of the great wealth I find there. And about halfway, he came across a peculiar fruit, which had a sort of abrasive segmented exterior, like a pine cone, and a firm interior pulp, not too dissimilar from an apple. When Columbus returned from the Americas to a society which was famously bereft of sweets, a society where refined sugar was imported as a high commodity from Asia, you can only imagine how nuts the oligarchy and the aristocrats went over this new, bizarrely beautiful looking fruit. Now, you see, the thing about pineapples is that they are a tropical fruit. That's why they're included on the Hawaiian pizza. Europe, however, is not a tropical climate. And it took the horticulturalists of Europe over 200 years to cultivate pineapples on the continent, and another 50 years after that to make it commercially viable. For the time being, nobles continue to pay through the nose almost $10,000 in today's currency for each individual fruit. In Europe, a pineapple goes absolutely nuts. It becomes associated across the continent with wealth and power. So much so that even King Charles II of England posed with a pineapple in hand for an official portrait as a symbolic gesture of royal privilege. So it's hardly surprising then to learn that this symbol of wealth and power became a favourite motif of architects, artisans and craftsmen of the time. Look around and it's not too hard to spot their work. That is the Southern Tower of St Paul's Cathedral in London. And this, what today might seem like the most bizarre building in Scotland or even the world, is the fourth Earl of Dunmore's boathouse. So what caused this shift from privilege to party platter? Well, two main things happened at the end of the 19th century. Firstly, huge pineapple plantations were established in Hawaii as it was colonised by Westerners. And secondly, there were huge advancements in steamboat travel. As transportation costs plummeted, so did its value. And that drop in value, it wasn't just economical, it was also cultural. But the thing is, the pineapple that you go out today and buy at the supermarket for around $3 tastes exactly the same as those being hauled across the Atlantic 500 years ago. It's not the fruit that's changed, it's our perception towards it. Galapagos tortoise is the longest living animal on the planet, right? Wrong. Next week, we check out the animals that outlive the Galapagos tortoise, including a couple that are biologically immortal. That's next week on The Science of Everything.